My name is Chris. Uh, I am a Polish community co-leader and I'm also a Polish uh, meetup uh, organizer. We even had uh, a nice nice meeting yesterday, a nice online meeting yesterday in Polish. I'm basically promoting uh, platform engineering in my country. Uh, I work in Bluesoft uh, as a platform engineering and uh, the management advisor. Um, I have like 11 experience in, in IT in various roles, starting from the uh, the programmer, the analyst, architect, then a manager, and now right now uh, m more into a consulting role. Um, and as a manager of the platforms, I have uh, delivered four platforms already. Uh, I started uh, early 2020. It was not, I think, even called platform engineering, but at the time. But but uh, I think that many people back then, when there were a lot of microservices coming, a lot of new delivery uh, uh, since the pandemic, before and since the since the pandemic, uh, the platform engineering is becoming more and more and more popular topic, and it's even mentioned in in Gartner top technology trends uh, this year. So so actually, uh, I'm doing platform engineering because before it, it was cool. Uh, we can say I write about platform engineering in my blog. Uh, you can you can find a link there. Uh, and I also started recently an uh, English uh, speaking channel about platform engineering. Uh, it's only two movies right now, but it will, more will be coming. The, my Polish channel is much, much bigger. Uh, my Polish channel is just without this global um, um, word. Uh, and I'm also a lecturer in Polish Japanese Academy of Information Technology. And I lecture, guess what? <laughs> platform engineering. So actually platform engineering is kind of a part, a big part of my life right now. And uh, before I uh, mentioned all and, and, and confess to all my mistakes, uh, first of all, I want to clarify just two terms, uh, uh, resources and capabilities. Um, it may be uh, surprising for you that I start with that and I'm not just, uh, you know, uh, underlining my, my my mistakes, but but actually understanding what is the resource, what is the capability uh, is the key reason why I did those mistakes. Uh, so so actually we start with that. What's the resource? What's the capability? Uh, capabilities are what we can do. So for example, uh, capability can be uh, like, uh, I can take my family to vacation. I can release new product to my customers. I can, um, I don't know, eat something. Yeah. So, so capability is what I can do, and resource is what uh, is uh, the tool and all the surroundings which allows me to do that. And uh, capabilities basically I de defining resources. So, for example, if we have a capability, we can take family to vacations in Poland. What resources we need? Uh, we basically need a comfy car and we need to have a driving license. So I think most of us are buying cars, not because the cars are shiny. Oh, okay, there will be some people uh, who, who buy that, buys cars like that, but still there is a capability behind it. So even uh, if, if there is not such an easy case, like we can take family to vacations in Poland, even if you buy the car because it's shiny, the capability is because I can make an impression on other people. So capability is basically the reason why we have the resources. Uh, different capabilities are basically uh, defining different resources. So uh, if we change a little bit the capability so we can travel to undiscovered places, we are going to have different resources to do that. So, so like a comfy car and driving license might not be enough. Uh, maybe we need to have a Jeep, maybe we need to have an off-road skill, so even an off-road driver. So basically capability is something which allows, uh, resource is something which allows us to uh, to have the capability, but it is capability which defines the resource. Okay, super high level thing. So let's uh, come back to the platform engineering and how it corresponds to the platform engineering. So basically if we've, Talk about the resources and capabilities in platform engineering. The more important stuff from the perspective of the platform manager are the capabilities. Because the capabilities is what my company, my organization I work in, can do. For example, in platform engineering, we can say that uh, my developers, we as a company, we can start working on a new applications five minutes after the idea we, we even had. So, so we have a team. And this team is not waiting for anything to start working on the application. So 
what resources we need to do that. Uh, of course, we need to have repositories for their code. We need to have CI CD for their application. If you want to start very fast, like in five minutes, basically we need orchestration for all of those tools where the application, which are supporting creation of the application, just to create new repo, uh, just to uh, create new namespace or new cluster, uh, just to just to start, just to even say that we want to start. That's why we have portals. Uh, if we think about the resources for such for the capability defined like that, uh, we also need some sometimes a demo application because we don't want our developers to waste time integrating the, integrating this application with networking stuff with 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 the, those CI/CD uh, with um, with databases for example and so on. They want to have they want to start right now. Like in five minutes, we want to start coding. We don't want to wait. So capabilities, we can start working on a new application in five minutes. We have resources for that. Another capability in platform engineering, um, we can troubleshoot our applications easily. So the bug fixes uh, are, are much more quicker than our competitors does that. So what resources do we need? We need observability monitoring tools. Uh, we also need to have all of those applications which we are having in the organization integrated into this observability easily. So that developers are not uh, thinking about how it works, but they can start using this observability very, very, very fast. Uh, and if you think about the platform engineering community or experts, uh, you can simplify the people into the engineers and into the people who manage the platforms. So engineers need to have skills to build the resources for the capabilities. Right, we we need to we need to know how to write Kubernetes operators. We need to know how to set up the backstage. We need to know how to write CI/CD pipelines. Uh, we need to know how to use APIs to uh, set up a repository or CLI, like technical technical skills. Uh, also, platform engineer needs to know why the platform engineer is doing it. So so basically, uh, the focus on 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 the platform engineer has is on the resources, but uh, but uh, understanding of the capabilities is, is also important. Platform managers need to think more about the capabilities because uh, managers are managing not only the platform, but also managing the platform services and platform SLA. So basically, if you are uh, a manager, there are some expectations that thanks to your team, thanks to your work, thanks to you, the organization will have capabilities necessary to to grow to grow the business uh, and basically missing that focus and 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 uh, maybe uh, the wrong balance here uh, between the resources and capabilities in both sides uh, I perceive as a root cause for all the mistakes I've made as a platform manager so uh, this was a long introduction, but actually very important because uh, platform engineering is not about writing Kubernetes operators. It's actually about creating the capability for our developers to build smoothly business applications, to do what we are paying developers to do, which is building and running business applications, providing features, providing business value, not playing with technology. This is our, uh, this is our goal. Our our task. Okay, so five mistakes uh, I've made being a platform manager. Uh, what are the conclusions I have because of them, uh, and uh, how to avoid it? So basically, we'll start with the we'll start with a journey uh, uh, on, on just to quickly define the scale. So basically, I as I mentioned, I built four platforms already. Um, the biggest one was in, in a bank in Ukraine, uh, the smallest one in Bank of Albania. So actually, <laughs> the, the, the platforms, uh, the first my first platform was the smallest one, the, the second platform was the biggest one. Uh, I also built a platform in Poland. Uh, it was the toughest one to build, I will tell you why. Uh, and and recently, I, I've migrated uh, the platform toolset um, from uh, on-premise to AWS stack in, in Croatia. I mean, not me. Me and my team, of course. Uh, and I, I advised also on, in transforming a DevOps team into a platform team in one of the biggest retail uh, companies in Poland. Uh, just to catch the numbers, uh, all of the platforms I've built 
uh, are supporting right now over 1,000 microservices, more than 30 uh, business domains and 250 engineers. Most of them are those in this Ukrainian bank, but, but not all. Uh, I would say like 60% maybe. Uh, and during that, I made five huge mistakes, five huge backups I'm going to share with you today. Okay, so first uh, mistake I made. Uh, first mistake I made is something which I call technology-oriented backlog. So uh, this is the example. You can see uh, this is uh, a real example of the backlog I had when I first started building my first or a second platform. It was, I think, a second platform. So basically, I knew that how to build a platform as an engineer, because I'm also an engineer. So I knew which capability, which which um, resources I need to have in order to build a platform. I knew that I need a Kubernetes cluster. I knew that I need uh, some observability tools to set up. I need to. Uh, I knew that I need to have a secret management uh, databases, API exposition, and so on, so on. So I wrote, wrote like uh, I, I draw a nice architecture, and then part by part, element by element, I, I, I started to define the backlog of the platform. Uh, and it was a mistake. Why it was a mistake? Um, because um, I forgot that actually a good Scrum backlog <laughs> is not about uh, the tools we are build using, uh, building a solution, but actually about the users and actually about the capability we are serving to the users. And what was the result? Uh, the result was that I have overcomplicated my platform. And actually, when the platform was fine, I mean, it was working, but uh, it took me much more time than it actually was needed to deliver the capability. So platform was too costly because of that. Uh, there are some, ma many things I did because I thought that it's important for the platform, which then was not used by the developers. And if I had backlog like this and I had, had the access so the developers can access to my backlog, they will see that there are some obsolete things there. So the conclusion is that perfect platform is not the perfect platform written in uh, GitOps uh, using uh, Kubernetes operators, uh, fancy portal. No, the perfect platform is the platform which is addressing most pressing developers' needs right now and reducing the cognitive load. If you wrote the, the team topologies, it's defined. Uh, very, very well, much better than I will do it uh, today. So basically, first of all, create capability-oriented or customer-oriented backlog instead of the resource-oriented backlog um, because you are going to over-engineer your platform, just like I did. Uh, second um, mistake, uh, another part of over-engineering the platform, but actually um, it was two mistakes I made. First of all, uh, Maybe the situation first. Uh, we had a we had a workshops. We had uh, discovery workshops before we started building the platform. Me and my team, and uh, we uh, discovered that actually the most pressing matter for this organization is to have troubleshooting uh, capability. And I understood it. I even wrote a backlog focused on this troubleshooting. But my mistake was that I left my team with it and I was not, I didn't make sure that they understand the goal. So actually, I asked them if they know what to do. Uh, in my opinion, what they know what to do is that they are going to provide troubleshooting uh, capability and they understood that they need to provide troubleshooting resources. What happened? Uh, the second small mistake, for me not small, is that I left those team. Uh, I left this team alone, so I didn't put too much focus on this project because it was small, and it appeared also to be my mistake. So, if you are a platform manager, you need to have full focus on this team. Uh, I was overwhelmed by another teams. I was trying to make more than one platform at once, and I failed with that because. Uh, I left the team and the team was not understanding the goals. So actually, uh, when I came back to the team and when I tried after two weeks, three weeks, uh, I noticed that, okay, the teams, the team made perfect work 
from the, in terms of the uh, resource orientation or the resource perfection. It was fully declarative, perfect observability. But um, first of all, it was not working well in terms of troubleshooting. So actually troubleshooting with this uh, observability was complicated. That, that's the first thing. But it wasn't that that bad. I mean, it, it was still better than no, no troubleshooting. What, what was uh, worse was that I knew that my team will leave this company uh, after some time. And there is a need for this solution to be as simple as possible so the devops in this organization can take over it and over complete over complication like uh, high complexity and and actually uh, not the perfect troubleshooting was not a solution uh, what was expected so what i would do today uh today i will probably ask my team not to make perfect uh, declarative infrastructure and everything as a code there but instead to do this uh, setup of Grafana, setup of Elk, uh, Elasticsearch, Elasticstack manually. Uh, because first we needed to test if this is what uh, actually developers needs and if they can use it. Because maybe after just, I don't know, one week of setting up everything manually and making a proof of concept, we would be, bet we would be able to make a better decision and we will be able to notice faster that uh, taking over the solution by the customer will be problematic. So uh, perfect resources uh, perfect resources are only where the capabilities are perfect, so perfectly addressed. If you are not addressing the capabilities, you can have all the fancy stuff behind the deck behind the behind the hood, all the infrastructure as a call, things like that, and still fail with the platform engineering. Okay, uh, another mistake. Um, I sold the idea of the platform too low in the organization. Um, quick history. Uh, we were uh, basically one of the biggest banks in Poland uh, was, uh, was um, had a need to build a lot of applications within one of the business domains they had. And uh, when I saw, oh, a lot of business applications, a lot of delivery teams, you probably need a platform team as well. And they said, and then, what is the platform team? So I explained to the guys, what is the platform team? What's the difference between just the platform team, platform team and just classical ops? And uh, that it's developer oriented, uh, that that's, that's, uh, that uh, there will be platform services there, that will be orchestrators, uh, that there will be portal, easily onboarding and so on and so on. They said, oh, that's a cool idea. Actually, let's build it. Okay. Uh, we won this, uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this delivery. We, we started working on, on, for this company and uh, I quickly noticed that, okay, what, Actually, I can only set up like Keycloak, Vault, and maybe CICD stuff. And for all of the rest of the things, like Kubernetes, observability, and so on and so on, it's already there in the company. And what I need to do is just to add, it is just adjusted to my platform. So I started to go to those teams and ask them if I can adjust it. And they were very surprised that I'm even asking, <laughs> and who am I? Uh, and it appeared that uh, actually um, the people I talked to during this offering process are not the people who are making decisions about the capabilities. And the capabilities are driving, driving the respons responsibility matrix in terms of the resources. So actually I couldn't touch the resources. I couldn't do a lot in the, all of the tools in the, in the, in the company in order to build my platform. So I had my ten, hands tied. How, how I did it, uh, how I did the platform in such, such conditions. Basically for my application delivery teams in this domain, I was working like a platform, but it was not one click automatic, but instead I was doing automatic uh, scripts in the tools I was able to set up by myself. I mean, by myself, my, my team could do that. And for the rest, we were just, uh, in, you know, following following the the official official channels, 
uh, requesting tickets and so on and so on. So actually the platform from the perspective of the developers, my developers in this domain were working, but it was not the platform like we, like we understand it. So the conclusion is that we need to ensure that the platform is decided on a proper level of the organization where the capabilities are being decided because platform is simply a resource as a technical thing. Platform is a resource to serve the capability. And uh, if we think about uh, changing some capabilities or changing some resources, we need to address it really, really high. Otherwise we have a hands tight. Um, okay. Uh, Almost fourth mistake I made is the approach to platform to, to deliver the platform in the organization. Because sometimes like organizing some tools and doing step by step, like providing one orchestrator and providing one service to the teams, uh going like slower but but more careful is better. And sometimes uh it's better to actually forget about the stack, the current technology stack that company is having and start building something new because this current technology stack is so messy or so old. And I made this mistake that actually I tried uh, to build uh, out of the old toolbox, I tried to build something new which uh, and organize it into the platform while I knew that there will be a lot of new teams coming, a lot of new deliveries coming, and a lot of new vendors in this company will be coming. Uh, and I had not a lot of time to, to set up the environment for it. So actually, my mistake was that I tried to evolve instead of revolve. Uh, normally, I would say, like, more common mistake is otherwise, that uh, people are thinking that new shiny will be much better than what we already have. Uh, and they are they're basically introducing new technology stack to the company, which is which is not fitting this company uh, at all. So my mistake was that actually uh, missing this strategy, and and I missed this strategy because uh, I haven't collaborated closely enough with the uh, business people to 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 know that there will be a lot of development coming and, and at what time the new development I can expect. And I was not collaborating with enterprise architecture. So enterprise architecture is also your ally if you're building the, the platform uh, just to match uh, the proper the proper strategy because sometimes resources can block you. Uh, current resources can block you, uh, block your capability. And sometimes uh, you just need to organize those resources better in order to achieve this capability and have a platform in one week. <laughs> so another mistake. And last mistake, uh, I was trying to make everybody happy uh, with the platform. Uh, the story behind is that we have started, uh, we have started uh, building the platform. Uh, what I did, what I normally do uh, as a platform manager, platform consultant is that I start with uh, functional analysis. So I introduce all of all of the teams uh, which are going to be customers of the platform in order to see how they are right now working what are their responsibility matrix uh, boundaries what uh, what are their competences uh, maturity and so on and so on just to uh, just to write the boundaries between the platform team and the stream aligned teams this is what i do uh, and i did that for that company and uh, there was one team which was much more mature than other teams so basically I tried so hard to make everybody happy that I initially tried to make others as mature as they this team is. I failed. So then I tried to convince this mature team to give up some power so the platform team, team can do things which they are doing by themselves. And both approaches were wrong. Uh, so actually, uh, this is one conclusion here, uh, one big conclusion here that uh, maybe in large organizations, platforms shouldn't be for every team. Maybe there will be some teams which are very mature or immature, and you won't be able to find uh, uh, a proper set of uh, services in the platform, proper set of responsibility, mat responsibility boundaries, which will fit everyone. Of course, you need to standardize. Standardize if you're 
doing the platform. This is what we why we are doing platform engineering, just to standardize, also to standardize uh, the, the software delivery practices in the company, but uh, don't do it uh, maybe in 100% for the teams. Maybe 80% will be enough. Maybe even few teams at the beginning will be enough. Uh, so so uh, instead you can make the extreme teams your challengers or make your or even reuse what they have built from the from themselves because maybe they already have a platform <laughs> which will fit also other other teams their colleagues in this company uh, okay uh, so those were the five th those are those five mistakes um, maybe a quick quick story how not to repeat those mistakes um so basically, as I said, all the all the mistakes I made are because of this imbalance between capability and and resources, and uh, maybe a wrong focus on the capability in terms of uh, too much to less. So how I normally do do the platforms uh, when I start building a platform, I'm always asking about what uh, the, the teams how uh, they are right now delivering what are their cognitive load and uh, what are their current practices. This is because uh, I'm trying to find this missing or interrupted capabilities that they are, they are going to need. And knowing that, knowing their practices, knowing their current technology stack, uh, knowing their cognitive load, their struggles, um, what I do, I plan the boundaries between the stream aligned team and platform team. And then I designed this platform services to, to match this cognitive load. And only then I select the technology. If you select the technology first, um, this is a mistake I never did, but I'm pretty sure that if you select the technology first, you're going to fail much more than I did with those five mistakes. Um, another hint is uh, related to my mistakes is remember where to focus as a manager. Uh, Resources in platform engineering are, let's say, well defined. Not only in our Slack, in CNCF, actually, every mo most of the most of the articles, movies, and so on in platform engineering I found was about the resources. How to write Kubernetes operators? How to set up backstage? Uh, how to write uh, uh, CI/CD pipelines and technos? Things like that. But if you are a manager, if you are leading the, the, the platform team, you need to focus more on the capabilities. And the capabilities also have some elements which will uh, which can help you uh, to clarify them, like cognitive load recognition uh, techniques, uh, all of the techniques uh, I'm, I'm using to recognize uh, what, what's, what are the current practices, uh, how the SDLC process looks like, who is responsible for what, so on. Another one of our definition of the platform services roles and permissions. So actually what is what platform team should serve uh, to the stream aligned teams? The same, it follows then with the platform operating model. Who is doing what? Who is responsible for what in particular tool? Uh, what are the success metrics? What are this SLA of the platform and how it how it's related to the capabilities? Uh, and how to write a proper business case for a platform because if you are not influencing capabilities in the in the company uh, in 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 IT strategic planning or even business planning sometimes uh, you won't be able to build a, the, the business case for a platform if you are not able to build the business case company will strictly not allow you to build the platform so you won't be able to address the capabilities because you will have a hands tight uh, and you need to define the platform strategy. So, which capability uh, we need to address first, and why, and what will be what will be uh, the success measures out of it. Um, one last thing at the at the end. Um, platform is not just a technical initiative. It's actually more a platform engineering is, is actually more about organizing teams, um, organizing the boundaries between the teams, uh, and organizing the platform team to serve. To be programmer centric, to serve the the, the the company, just serve the programmers, just like the programmers serve serve the business. So, uh, and basically, platform engineering is more about those capabilities and resources. If you think about why we build the platforms, so 
you can start even with the business strategy. If your business strategy if you, is that you need to grow your business, then you need to scale up and boost the efficiency of, of delivery of, the, of, of your application. If you need that, uh, if you want to scale up and boost efficiency of the applications, you need to first do this with practices and with the teams and see, make a simplification to your SDLC. To, to do that, you need to organize the team topology, you need to organize the competences boundaries, you need to organize the architecture, you need to organize sometimes IT operating model. This leads to the platform and platform team, and this leads to the Kubernetes operators. So it's, if, actually, if you start low, uh, you risk that actually you are going, you, you can make more mistakes than I did, uh, because you will just write software for nothing. So remember that capabilities are defining resources and platform engineering is all about it. Okay. Uh, thank you, <laughs> guys. Uh, I think I'm, yeah, one minute uh, behind the schedule. Uh, so just one minute. Time for your Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one minute. I I put it, you know, the start record, start uh, uh, the timer. So yeah. Very good. Wow! Look at you, very organized. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't delivered in time, so I'm not very well organized. <laughs> questions, guys. Uh, questions. Exactly. Let's jump into questions. Um, there was one while you were showcasing the first mistake. Um, is the, uh, was it for on-prem or cloud platform? Uh, the first was on-prem. The first mistake. I mean, the first mistake. It was it was my second platform. It it, it was on-prem. It was uh, uh, based on OpenShift, and and uh, the first platform I built was in AWS, but the second, the biggest one, was on-premise. Uh, Fun, fun, fun part is that uh, uh, right now this platform is also migrated to the LWS, but I was not doing that. So yeah, uh, the first one, the first one was was on premise, but uh, you can make the same mistake on cloud as well. <laughs> um, question from Darren: uh, Who should define the capabilities, architecture, product, or? Platform. CIO should define capabilities, I think, uh, in, in the level of the whole company. That's my opinion. Or may, maybe, maybe like a board of the management. Uh, then cap like business capabilities, business capabilities should have uh, the reflection in IT capabilities. So business capabilities are defining the, the, the IT capabilities. IT capabilities are part of the IT strategy. This is part of where the CIO, CTO are working. And then if you have that defined, uh, of course, platform and, and manager can help it, but this is where the platform manager goes. So if you know, uh, or even if you help define the capabilities, uh, you need to then make an audit. Uh, okay, those are the capabilities we want to have, what capabilities we are having right now, uh, and how far are we for this target capabilities? And this is where, th this is the job for the platform manager, I think. That's why you need to start the platform engineering very high. Actually, it's very hard to do platform engineering from from the bottom of the organization because, because it's more about organizing the work between teams. It's more much more than than technology itself. Very cool insight. But um, then uh, the decision should come from from the C level. Uh, what if they are not? on board you do not i think that, uh, you, you need to convince them uh because uh, uh boards may not see missing capabilities uh they should see uh, missing capabilities but they w may not be aware of it uh because they are focusing on the business goals uh, business goals are much more important than capabilities because goals are defining the capabilities so actually if you see in the organization that there is a missing capability or there is a capability but you can do it much better so for example, we can onboard teams in five minutes instead of the five days, and you can build a business case out of it, like calculate how much time uh, how much time you need to start to build your application, calculate uh, how much time is being spent on waiting for something, because if the developers are waiting, they're still billing your company for, for their work, right? So, so you can actually build a nice business case out of, out of the waiting time. 
Uh, and if you're a platform manager or you want to be a platform manager, you want to build a platform, uh, you should build the business case. Maybe, maybe, maybe board is not aware that you you can do something much better with platform engineering on on on, on deck on in your company. And uh, you mentioned like onboarding a developer. That's uh, one of those uh, ca capabilities. But what what are others um, like? I don't know reasons that you've seen uh, that people would invest into building uh, a platform. Uh, troubleshooting is another one. Uh, exposing application to uh, to the users can be another one. To to uh, to, to to the to the world. Uh, taking over. A, Taking over um, code from the vendors can be another one. Um, starting new 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 uh, business initiative uh, or adding, for example, new component to existing system, or uh, migrating one system to from one place to another place. And I'm not talking only about the migration between on-prem and cloud, but also between the teams. Like one microservice goes to another team. It happens. I mean. It should happen uh, if you see that uh, that from the domain-driven design perspective, it's better. So you can have the, such service in in in, in the platform. Uh, what else? It actually depends on this on this cognitive load your developers have and uh, and uh, like uh, what is the most important thing for them. Sometimes it's even regulations. If you need to uh, create uh, like a ton of Useless documentation because I don't know FDA uh, uh, in USA uh, tells you that you need to do that for regulated systems. It's also maybe something for for platform platform team to do. Everything which is not bringing directly the business value uh, should be should be in hands of the platform engineers. Yeah, that's what uh, we see as well. A lot of um, the standardization as well across uh, mm -hmm. the setups, enabling developer self-service, yeah. um, yeah. speeding up the development cycle and stuff like that. Updates in like Java updates. Cool. But uh, while I was asking my questions, here we go. Lots of questions from the audience. How do you limit the risk of siloing off uh, from the operations and development teams? Uh, can you repeat that question? Um, of course. How do you limit the risk of mm -hmm. uh, siloing off from the operations and development teams? Um, first of all, you need to you need to define if you have development and operation teams. <laughs> Sometimes they are they they are the same people. Um, this is the first thing. The second thing is that uh, the the platform will be different for. Uh, such setup, such operating model, and different for the let's say DevOps teams, uh, because it can be some services designed for the ops teams. It can be some services designed for the dev teams, and it will be different. I, I'm not sure if I'm asking, if I'm uh, explaining it well. Uh, maybe, maybe some. Um, yeah, maybe you want to rephrase yeah. the question yeah. or add yeah. an example paulo so that yeah. we'll go back to the question uh, a little bit later uh you talked about some of the things you believed were failures uh would any of them have been prevented more ex um, more experience better tools or something that now exists tech or otherwise yeah it's a nice question um actually i think that uh, all the mistakes i've made are because of lack of experience uh that's the first thing uh tools that's also a nice question let's see the mistakes maybe maybe mistake after mistake uh, okay so technology oriented backlog was definitely because of uh, lack of experience uh not only in platform engineering but also in um uh, Products delivery because platform is a product. I, I think that it's even more important. Uh, over engineering the platform. Uh, yes, today uh, tools can 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 solve it uh, because tools are much more easier than it was th they were like four years ago. And I think that taking over uh, observability stack, uh, Elastic stack today, is much easier than it was so like three years ago. Uh, selling the idea to low 
fully <laughs> full, full, full lack of experience. Uh, mismatched delivery strategy tools can also, you know, um, challenge that right now. I think we, we have, uh, right now we have some ready to use almost complete platforms uh, like Loft, like like um, maybe even Humanitech, uh, like like uh, like Red Hat, like uh, uh, cloud cloud based uh, Azure DevOps, which basically can simplify the decision because oh everything is already there, so let's go with the big bang because big bang is actually not that big, <laughs> so so maybe maybe that and trying to uh, make everybody happy definitely lack of mistake. Uh, we've got a central ops team making a transition to a platform model and we are running into mm -hmm. issues where the team is getting uh, bogged down in toil. Any tips for defining boundaries and making sure a platform team doesn't turn into a service desk? Nice, uh, nice question. Um, first of all, get rid of the responsibility for the business applications. Uh, this is what you need to do in order to become a platform team. If you are central ops teams, uh, uh, meaning that you are doing operations for the business applications and infrastructure, it happens uh, It happens very often in companies. First thing I advise you to do is to get rid of the responsibility for operations, uh, for the business operations on the application. So, for example, limit yourself maybe only to first support line. And so maybe even make another make separate team for this first uh, second support and build uh, the platform team like in parallel to this ops team. Uh, if you don't get rid of the business logic, uh, taking care of the business application, you you will never be a platform team. Uh, just like team topologies are describing describing it, the platform team should not focus on that. That's the first thing. Uh, second thing. Um, because th this will be a stick to your delivery teams because not right now they they need to take care on the business operations of the applications which they were not doing so basically you are throwing this uh, from you to to them that there will be a struggle so we need to think about the stick uh, and the stick can be making th this as much simple as possible meaning for example providing very easily to use uh, uh, troubleshooting stuff like observability and monitoring. Um, what other uh, carrot? <laughs> it's hard for me to actually think about carrots here uh, because uh, maybe a carrot will be uh, for the architects of those teams to uh, of those delivery teams to live with their decisions uh, and and. Uh, you can try to convince them that uh, making better decisions will make them more valuable on the market. But uh, you basically need to have a support from, from the board or maybe from IT management uh, in order to transform ops, central ops into platform because uh, the situation you are having, having central ops teams uh, is, is, actually, is actually convenient for everyone, maybe not for you. <laughs> So if you want to transform to platform team, of course you will be serving them, but but first you are going to expect troubles and and, and struggle, uh, basically. And think about why you why you want to do that because central ops team is not always that idea. If you are running, for example, if you have your strategy was to build products, uh, and you are not having a lot of delivery, uh, new 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 delivery maybe, like transformation into platform is not a, a great idea, maybe, but I don't know your situation well, but, but think about why you want to change the platform, change into the platform. And first thing you need to do is get rid of the, the business operations in your team, I think. Nice. Uh, as platform engineering, platform management, how do you ensure we don't build product features? Also, how do we communicate our platform resources to the stream aligned teams? We don't do we, we don't build the product features. Actually, we should build <laughs> features. Um, first of all, uh, I try to be as serverless 
as possible to my teams when I'm managing the team, uh, the platform team, meaning that uh, I don't want my developers to care much about Kubernetes, to care much about the resources uh, and also resources in, in terms of infrastructure. Uh, if I have mature teams, of course, uh, of course, uh, I can build them. I mean, uh, if they spend too much resources, too much uh, in in a cloud, uh, of course, they it can be a bill, uh, like virtual or even real bill between platform and stream aligned team. Uh, I also include this bill in the platform service. So if I have, for example, onboarding service, or I have. Uh, uh, network uh, opening the network communication between applications or between platform and and external world uh, service then uh, what i would do is to include this cost of this networking include the cost of the resources also in the service so if the team is for example asking me to uh, provide them with the environment super super huge environment uh I will probably ask them why you need such a huge environment <laughs> uh, and and try to maybe be uh, uh, be also an advisor to them in terms of utilization of the resources or include it in the platform service. If you are uh, requesting this much, it will cost your domain, your business domain that much. So think about think about uh, think about that. <laughs> your business management will maybe not be super happy with with this bill I'm going to provide after the service. Uh, cool. How to leave a team behind in regards to uh, the too mature team? I imagine that uh, this is maybe um, tricky to communicate. Any recommendations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I left this team behind. I mean, I was not serving them uh, here. Uh, as long as they are more um, capable and they are faster and they have a quicker time to market and they are they have better uh, cost efficiency than other teams are which are using the platform. The moment where uh, other teams using the platform becomes quicker, cheaper, better. Uh, I told the board that they actually should then press on the steam that they should migrate to the to the platform i i'm not sure if it answers the question but uh, but uh, but uh, i'm not leaving them behind let's say they are not they are they are aware what is happening on the platform and it's their decision to go to the platform so uh, their decision uh, at the moment of time of course where where uh, they become less efficient than others. If they are less efficient than others, they will be forced to, to go to the platform. Should new platforms uh, focus mostly on new modernized applications uh, in the future, or should they be built to support legacy applications from the start? It depends. Uh, it depends on your uh, IT strategy, I think. Um, because um, if you know that there will be a lot of new delivery and this new delivery will replace the legacy applications. I won't migrate the legacy applications to the platform, but uh, but if there is, you know that it will be in balance like 50-50, for example, maybe it's worth to go to the platform, uh, but the platform would then serve a little bit different purpose. Maybe the platform will have uh, different services, just. Maybe not that automated onboarding, for example, but uh, other things. Uh, matter of the priorities and matter of what you want to actually achieve with the platform. If you want to achieve uh, cost-effective IT in terms of the whole life cycle, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the whole company should go to the platform. If you want to achieve uh, competitive advantage in shorter term with uh, new applications which are uh, revolutionary uh, for for the business. Maybe the platform should be only for for the applications which are new. It it depends all on the business strategy, IT strategy, and what you want to achieve with the platform. But as a manager, you need to understand that, and you need to ask such questions. 
always ask questions. <laughs> yeah. um, so the explanation from Paolo, remember the question about silos. So the question was how to limit the risk to become a silo, for, uh, for example, to isolate wow. the platform engineering team too much from the development or ops teams. In other mm -hmm. words, how do you limit the risk to get the requirements from the internal clients go off yeah. to develop and then realize that too late, a little bit too late, that actually the result is not what was expected. Uh, I call it continuous platforming. <laughs> uh, continuous platforming means that if you're a platform manager, you need to be a developer's business partner. It means that you actually need to spend more time with those uh, developers, even than your platform team. Uh, I also encourage, um, I, I do that myself and I encourage other platform managers to open their backlog uh, so, so the developers can define their own tasks there. Uh, of course, you need to evaluate them, ask maybe why you need that, because sometimes a developer will tell you, oh, I need to have an access to Kubernetes. And they will tell, will ask, okay, why? Oh, because there there is some log file there, <laughs> there is some logs there which I want to see. Okay, so basically you don't need an access <laughs> to, to, to the resource, but you need to have an access uh, to this log. So let's uh, maybe uh, show this log in a, uh, in Elastic Stack uh, console. Maybe it's better. But, but basically uh, you need to make a constant evaluation of the service you're providing and you need to make a constant, uh, you know, system analysis. Uh, I do periodically uh, value stream mappings uh, with with my with the delivery teams just to see how they are delivering. Uh, I use questionnaires. I use uh, I use interviews. Um, sometimes I even use value proposition canvas just for them, to, so so they can you know say what they like, with, what they dislike about my platform. Uh, I also use some self uh, self evaluations, so like uh, formulas forms which I send to developers what they like, what they does, does not like. I also have communication channel dedicated for, 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 for the platform so they can, you know, put some ideas, ask questions. Uh, I have some people in, if I have a large platform, we had uh, a dedicated person every week to be on that chat and, and, and gather ideas, answer questions and so on for most of the time uh, in, 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 in this person work. Uh, you basically need to be in touch with, with the developers constantly and ask uh, ask them how they are going. Ask enterprise architecture what are the plans, what are the development plans for the company. Uh, ask CIO where you're heading uh, so you know that, for example, new vendors will be coming and those new vendors will be your client, will, will be your customers for the platform. Um, the best way to avoid... avoid um, being an ivory tower as a platform manager is uh, having the right balance here. If you think about capabilities, not resources, the capabilities are for somebody. So the somebody is much more important than, than what you have maybe under the hood of the platform. Cool. How does the platform team concept work in an environment that supports citizen development as well as professional development? I'm not aware what is citizen development. I have had this, this, this term, but uh, to be honest, I don't know what it does. What does it mean? So I cannot answer that question. If you can explain it, then I can I can relate to that. Yeah, I also don't know. Uh, what are some good platform engineering tools? Are there are alternatives to backstage? Uh, how about no code tools? Um. <laughs> Okay, uh, this will this will be disruptive, but I would say um, Jira can be platform tool. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's ideal. I mean, uh, for me, the backstage is uh, the best in terms of uh, having GitOps and and uh, flexibility and and providing this as an interface for the developers. But before backstage, I, I was using Jira. And I had the Jira TKEX for each uh, for each platform service. Uh, everything you right now provide in Backstage was provided in Jira. Uh, sometimes YAML can be enough uh, if you have uh, teams, uh, let's say, 
uh, which are YAML or REST APIs if, if you have mature teams. Um, I haven't been to any any portal uh, on different tool set than Backstage right now uh, and Jira, let's say, but maybe do not call it portal. <laughs> You are muted, I think. Yeah, I was. Thank you. So Brian explained uh, what um, citizen development means. So business users uh, using low-code platforms to develop mm -hmm. solutions. So the question was, how does the platform team concept work in an environment that supports citizen development as well as professional development? Mm, that's a nice question. Uh... I don't have a ready answer in my head, uh, so I will just share my thoughts. Um, there will be some organizations which may not need platform engineering. If your strategy is to use low codes, uh, if your strategy is to use uh, maybe serverless uh, uh, tools which are easy to, to set up, uh, maybe you don't need a platform team. Re remember that platform team is why you need platform team? You need platform team to address the cognitive load. Uh, this cognitive load needs to be uh, need, needs to be pretty similar for most of the teams in the organization, um, or repetitive, or 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 uh, it should be blocking you. If you don't have anything which blocks you, uh, such no code platform can actually work as a platform, uh, and and maybe you don't need a platform team. But the, I'm not very sure uh, about the statement I'm telling right now. I mean, uh, uh, platform engineering is not a solution for everything. And there are operating models which are very fine, very well defined, uh, working perfectly uh, where you won't find a platform team there. Uh, platform, platform team is only one of the uh, ideas how to organize IT, but maybe maybe not uh, matching everything. Or maybe the platform team is not what we think it will be. Maybe this platform team is the team which actually uh, takes care of this no-code platform. <laughs> it's If you think about team topologies and if they take care that, uh, they ensure that this platform is operational, they ensure that this platform is uh, easy to use by the developers and so on and so on. It's actually, you can ask uh, Manuel or Matthew, <laughs> Uh, but this will be a platform team, <laughs> the, the guys which are taking care of this tool. <laughs> but it's a very tricky question. I, I like that. I, I will think about it. Yeah, maybe connect on platform engineering Slack channel so that you can uh, post an answer there. Or we can yeah, even yeah. like uh, put it in general and ask what other people think. That's also a good mm -hmm. idea. Um, and the last question, how do you manage competing platforms in the environment such as Salesforce or Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, Power Platform? Um, I think you don't need to, uh, they're not competing. I think they are more, um, maybe some business capabilities uh, should not be built uh, in a custom software or a software which requires uh, Kubernetes or platform uh, as we understand it. Uh, to be honest, if you if you think about, uh, there is the spaced layer, Gartner sp spaced layer architecture. It's like a triangle here and we have systems of innovation, systems of differentiation, system of records. So, um, I personally think that most of the system of, of the of records and system of uh, differentiation, but maybe not most of the differentiation, like half of the differentiation, uh, are not very innovative because it's like, I don't know, final, finance management in a company which is retail, for example, or actually does not bring this competitive advantage. Um, maybe for applications like that, you can buy products or you can build uh, easy applications upon uh, Salesforce or, or upon Microsoft Power Apps, and it will be still fine. Uh, this is maybe more a question not to platform manager, more to enterprise architect, uh, which, uh, which uh, 
and this is maybe the question which platform manager should ask enterprise architect, which uh, applications should be in the platform. Uh, if you think about this uh, systems of differentiation and innovation, this is where I see the, the, the biggest benefit of the platform, like internal developer platform, uh, because you need to have their full flexibility and maybe no vendor lock, because this is what drives your innovation in, in the business. And uh, and uh, for for that definitely definitely I I would build platform for 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 applications like that, but maybe not for all applications in the company, depending on of course how large company you are you're working on. But custom development is not also a solution for everything. There is no solution for everything, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah, we wish there was remedy for everything. Yeah. yeah. Cool. With that, uh, let's wrap up this webinar. Thank you so much, Krzysztof, for staying uh, a little bit over time, seven minutes uh, <laughs> over time. Uh, yeah. Thanks uh, to everyone who uh, also stayed with us, but it uh, looks like it was a very interesting talk. So thank you for driving it. Also wanted to mention to you guys that PlatformCon, the biggest platform engineering conference uh, that happens in June, we close our call for speakers this um, Sunday. So if you have something interesting to share with the platform engineering community and uh, overall uh, you have experience building in building platforms, that's the place to be, submit your talk and um, become a speaker. Krzysztof, did you submit your talk? already should i lie or should i tell the truth because i actually oh, will be i will be will be submitting tomorrow <laughs> um my idea was to submit yesterday but we had uh, preparations for this uh, platform uh, polish community of platform engineers and it took longer than expected but i will be i mean not only me but also with with my colleague patrick we are going to submit together and nice. we are going to talk about AI. So I keep my fingers crossed that uh, we will be allowed to do that. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to your session if, uh, <laughs> thank if you. that's selected. But thank uh, cool. Yeah, thank you so much to everyone. We'll send over the slides and um, webinar recording to everyone who registered. So in case you were not able to say until the end or want to share this, uh, talk with your colleagues, you'll be able to do so. And um, that's it. Uh, thank you so much. Hope everyone has a safe and uh, good end of the day or just like start of the day and uh, ending of the week. Uh, and uh, see you see you next week, guys. We are meeting every every week, just like, you know, in the school. <laughs> and uh, yep. cool. any last words? First of build platforms and build platforms, sure. Things or <laughs> build <laughs> platforms which, which does not produce more cognitive load than all the, they already the developers already have. So that's my final <laughs> word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Thank you.